cone beakers with these characteristic looped decoration threads are from the mid 5th to the 6th century. The best known example is called the Kempston beaker because it was found in Kempston, England. This Corning Museum of Glass example is particularly fine. Kempston beakers are hefty beakers. They're rather thick-walled, and they can be quite large. So it requires a lot of glass. This is a coating gather, and this is a collecting gather. The goal is to get as much glass as possible on the end of the blowpipe. Before blowing the bubble into the glass, the glass needs to be preferably egg-shaped and certainly perfectly round and concentric with the blowpipe. So the wood block is lifted upward gently against the turning glass to create an excellent egg-shaped form. This is briefly reheated. Air is blown into the blowpipe The goal is to make an elongated bubble so the blowpipe is held downward. And as blowing occurs, gravity pulls the bubble longer and longer. Eventually, the bubble will have to be separated from the blowpipe. And that will be done with a constriction near the blowpipe. And that's begun at this stage. The two-bladed tool called the jacks are used to constrict the glass. As blowing and shaping continues, it's essential to begin the constriction near the blowpipe. The two-bladed tool called the jacks is used to further narrow the constriction. The glass is reheated, the bubble is blown larger, the blowpipe is held downward to cause gravity to elongate the bubble. Occasionally it's spun for the centripetal force to further elongate the bubble. The lower half is held with the pincers and pulled to make the lower portion conical and taller. And a fine spiral thread is created in the upper third or so of the vessel. First, the glass is trimmed to make a point. A light touch connects the two and spinning and pulling creates the narrow thread. The thread is especially vulnerable to thermal shock. And at this stage, the glass is reheated for as long a time as possible to help melt the threads into the surface of the bubble. This is to elongate and straighten the structure. And at this point, the loop process begins. While this likely was done with an assistant, I do it solo. It's an interesting choreographic challenge. The gather is elongated, a loop is made, touched, laid down, pressed on gently, 
and the glass is cut free of the gathering rod. This is repeated 11 times. A critical part of the process is keeping the spiral thread hot enough so as not to crack. So after I've gathered the next loop, before I begin the loop, I flash the uppermost part of the vessel to ensure it staying hot enough to protect the thread. Again, the tip is grabbed, pulled long, a loop is created, It's touched, dragged along, and pressed in place. After all of the loops are made, the entire vessel is softened slightly. At this point, the loops are not perfectly parallel. They're a little bit helter-skelter, and when the tip of the vessel is pulled longer, they immediately straighten out. It vastly improves the appearance of the vessel. The excess glass is trimmed from the tip of the vessel and the bottom is reheated and flattened. After careful flashing, to make sure that the spiral threads are as hot as they can be, the vessel is transferred to the punty. The punty is straightened. The tips of the pincers are squeezed in the constriction. The blowpipe is tapped and the neck breaks. This is the longest reheating and glass blowing, the initial reheat after the transfer to the punty. The glass is softened and the jacks used to dilate the hole and to shape the sides. and the rim is given its final flare. The vessel is flashed before placing it in the annealing oven for gradual cooling. An object like this can be cooled in as little as two or three hours.